Hello and welcome to the session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we're going to look at an example that deals with process costing. So we're going to see the journal entries that deal with process costing. And as a result of this trans as a result of this exercise, I hope I can show you how how the process uh, the, how the cost flow within job order costing. So let's take a look at the first transaction. And the first transaction reads ninety four thousand of raw material were purchased. So what's the journal entry for this? Well, the journal entry is you debit raw material. So what I'm gonna do, rather than doing the journal entry, I'm gonna do T account. So I'm gonna do raw materials. I purchased 94,000 of raw materials and I'm gonna credit cash. So I'm gonna go down here and credit cash. The reason why I just put cash away from raw material, because it doesn't really matter, I'm gonna focus on the important account that are considered product account a product accounts yes transaction B 89,000 in raw material were used in production okay of this amount 78,000 was for direct material that's important and the remainder was for indirect material what are they telling me here what they're telling me here is I transferred from raw material 89,000 so I'm gonna go ahead and transfer 89,000. I'm going to credit raw material 89,000. And what am I going to debit? Well, I am going to debit. I'm going to debit manufacturing overhead. And I'm going to debit work in process. Now, how do I know which one goes to work in process and which one go to manufacturing overhead? The direct material is considered work in process. So it goes right into production right to the production line, 78,000. So of this 89,000, 78,000 went to here. And the remainder, the remainder obviously is, is uh, let's see, 11,000. I'm gonna need to debit this. 11,000 went to here. Went to manufacturing overhead. Went to manufacturing overhead, All right? Let me do this in a different color work in process. I'm just gonna work in process. I'm gonna have it as a green account. Work in process. All right. And you will see why I'm doing this. All right, let's take a look at transaction C. Total labor wages of 132,000 were incurred, of which 112 was for direct labor cost. It means the people who are working on the line touching the product and the remainder is for indirect labor. Well, let's do this. So I'm gonna have now wages payable or whatever you want to call it. I'm incurring wages. I'm, inco I'm incurring wages. Of this amount, let's see again, 132, 112 goes to work in process. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna debit work in process 112,000. I'm going to debit. Oh, well, actually, we're going to be paying those cash. It says it says we paid them. So it says, let me go back here to the problem. It says we're incurred and paid. Okay, so basically, I paid cash 132,000. 132,000 of this amount, 112 goes to work in process. 112 goes to work in process. And the remainder of 112, which is 112 minus 32, is 20,000. The remainder goes into 20,000 goes into manufacturing overhead. And this is for the indirect material. Okay. So far, so good. Additional manufacturing overhead costing 143,000 were incurred and paid. So I paid cash. I'm going to credit cash 143,000. And I'm going to charge this to manufacturing overhead, 143,000. Manufacturing overhead of 152 was applied to production using the company's predetermined overhead rate. They're not, gonna, they're not telling us what's the predetermined overhead rate. It doesn't matter, but we know that 152 was applied. So I need to transfer 152,000 out of manufacturing overhead, and it's going to go into work and process. Excellent. So I transferred 152 from manufacturing overhead to work in process. 
all the jobs in process at the end of the month were completed. What does that mean? It means all this account here, work in process, all the all, everything was completed, and this is 342. Therefore, I need to remove 342 from work in process and send it to, so I finished everything. I have no work in process to finished goods. So 342, I credit work in process and I debit finished goods 342. I transferred, I transferred it from work in process and finished goods. Now work in process is zero. I just transferred everything. It happens to be the case. That's not what usually happens. All the jobs were shipped to customers. Well, I sold everything and they don't tell us how much I sold them for. It doesn't matter. I'm just showing you how things work. When you sell everything, what's going to happen? It's going to leave finished goods, 342,000. So I'm going to credit finished goods and I'm going to debit cost of goods sold. Now, how much did I sold them for? Assuming I sold them for half a million, I debit account receivable, I credit sales for half a million, but we don't care about the sale. Just showing you how the cost of goods flow. So notice raw material, manufacturing overhead, and labor from cash okay those three went into work in process then work in process went to went to went to finished goods then finished goods is zero because i sold everything and everything end up on cost of goods sold which is it happens to be an income statement account so this is hopefully you see the the flow of goods any under applied or over applied overhead for the period was closed to cost of goods sold now i need to know what happened to my manufacturing overhead so let's go down here and this is my manufacturing overhead. Let me go ahead and see what's going on here. On this end, if I add everything up, zero, 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 four, six, seven, uh, 174. So I have 174 debit. This is, it means this is how I actually, how much I actually incurred. And the 152 is how, I, how much I actually applied or estimated to work in process, how much I actually applied applied okay how much i applied versus actually what happened what i actually incurred was way more than what what i actually what i actually incurred i'm sorry what i estimated was less so this is the estimated applied means estimated i estimated estimated i estimated 152 but i incurred actually incurred 174 what does that mean at the end i have to close manufacturing overhead it means i need to credit so i under I underestimated my overhead. I underestimated. So what's going to happen? I'm going to have to credit this account an additional 22,000. Let me do it in a different color. I'm going to credit this account. I'm going to credit manufacturing overhead 22,000. Okay? Because I because I underapplied it and I'm going to debit what I'm going to close it. I'm going to close it to cost of goods sold. I'm going to increase I'm going to increase my expenses, increase cost of goods sold. Therefore, cost of goods sold end up to be 364000 All right. And what happened to manufacturing overhead? Manufacturing overhead now is zero because I have 174 on both ends. Therefore, the balance is zero for manufacturing overhead. So hopefully you saw how the, 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 the cost flows in a job order costing. Once again, we raw material went to work in process. Manufacturing overhead went to work in process and labor went to work in process. Anything that's done in work in process once to finish good and we happen to finish everything, which is a little bit unrealistic. Then from finished goods, everything transferred to cost of goods sold. And at the end of the period, we determined that we under applied overhead. Uh, um, yes, we under applied, we underestimated overhead by 22,000. That account was closed to cost of goods sold. Now we could have also closed um, overhead to uh, part of it to raw material, part of it to work in process, and part of it to cost of goods sold. But it told us close everything to cost of goods sold. Hopefully, this exercise show you how the process of uh, how the cost of flow uh, process, how the cost of flow, how the cost flow goes in a job order costing. If you have any questions, any comments, by all means, email me or see me in class. If you're studying for your CPA exam or for your CMA, study hard.